What if you could have the benefits of static site generation with the flexibility of server-side rendering? With Next.js, you can. My name is Otto, and in this video, we'll learn all about incremental static regeneration and the benefits it can bring to our applications. Let's do it. All right, let's talk about incremental static regeneration. What this feature aims to do is provide the benefits of server-side rendering with static site generation, meaning your pages are pre-computed, load super, super fast, and have the latest and greatest data. But before we can get into how incremental static regeneration works, I think it'll help to better understand how server-side rendering and static site generation work, and this will help us see how incremental static regeneration is the next logical step. So I've created a quick presentation that we'll go through. All right, so the first example we'll take a look at is server-side rendering. Now this is the traditional way that applications have been built and the way that they traditionally run. And the way that that works is all of your processing is done on the server every single time a request comes in. So you may have your application server that might need to talk to a database, that might talk to other APIs and other resources. And every time a user comes to your website, makes a request, your server is going to process that request. It's going to generate that HTML, CSS, JavaScript, everything on demand, go out, get the data if it needs, and then serve you the page. And every subsequent time the user you know, takes an action, visits a different page, this process repeats. So your server is doing a lot of work on demand every single time. It's talking to your database, it's talking to different APIs. And this ensures that your user always has the latest and greatest data coming directly from the database, coming directly from the different APIs, but this is really resource intensive. And if you have many users coming to your site, you might see something like this. If you've ever worked with WordPress and your site got a lot of visitors, it is very likely that you saw this error more than once. And the reason that this has traditionally happened is you, you get an influx of users, you get too many people trying to access the resources, and your backend server, your database server, does not have enough compute power to process all of those requests, generate all of that data, so you get error messages like this. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, we have static site generation. And the way that this traditionally has worked is you generate all of the content of your website ahead of time. So you can do this via a static site generator like Jekyll or Hugo, or maybe you create all of the content yourself, but all of the content is created as HTML files ahead of time. So now when a user comes to your application and requests a home page, a contact page, whatever page they request, your server can very quickly respond and load it because it doesn't have to do any processing. It doesn't have to generate any HTML. It just serves it. The other big benefit of static site generation is that you can host your website anywhere. You can host it on an S3 bucket. You can host it on a on any sort of cloud CDN. And this makes it so that your application can scale globally, can serve data very, very quickly. But the downside is the data that is served may be stale, may be old. And the only way to update it is to build the application again. And this can take some time. Like if you're using Hugo, Hugo builds really quick, but you still have to deploy the content to the CDN for the user to see the updates. So if you get a million users to your static site, they might all be able to load a resource and load the page, but they may not have the latest and greatest data. And if your application does need to make an update, you'll have to re-kick the build process off. And this is where incremental static generation or regeneration comes in. When you build your application, you get a static site. So when a user comes in, they make a request, they're gonna be served content that they expect. And you get all of the benefits of static sites. All of your pages are gonna load super quickly because they're already pre-cached and pre-generated on the server. Where the regenerative part comes in is every so often what our application is gonna do is it's going to go back into our database, call an API, or do any sort of backend processing that we need it to do on an increment and get the latest and, and greatest data. So, you know, it might do this every second for a particular page or it might do it every minute, every hour, whatever you decide. 
but this will ensure that you can get the latest and greatest data without having to fully rebuild your application. Your users, on the other hand, are always going to be accessing the pre-generated HTML pages. So they're always going to load super fast. They can always be served from a CDN, from, from an S3 bucket and things like that. So in this way, you get the best of both worlds. You know, if you get a huge influx of users, they're all going to be able to load the content. But when you do make changes to it, your Next.js application will be aware of those and rebuild the required pages for it. So this is a really powerful feature of the Next.js framework. And next, we're going to take a look at how it works in practice. All right, so let's go into Visual Studio Code and build a Next.js application and use static site generation and regeneration. So I'm going to open Visual Studio Code up. I already have an example repo set up and I'm using the with MongoDB example because we want to get some dynamic data that we can iterate on, make changes to and see how static site generation and regeneration works. All I've done is run npx, create next app and use the with MongoDB example. And then I just made a couple of small edits uh, in the package.json file. I changed the start script to run on port 8080. And then I created one new page called blog.js, which is going to hold the contents of our blog posts that we're going to get from MongoDB. <clears throat> Let's start up the server and make sure our application works. So we'll say npm run dev to start in development mode. And my application is uh, served on localhost 3000. So let's navigate there and make sure that everything works. Here I am on localhost 3000 and we get the message, welcome to Next.js with MongoDB. And I get the message saying that you are connected to MongoDB, which is a feature of the with MongoDB example that I created for Next.js. And what this message does is tells us that we have successfully connected to a MongoDB database. And for my MongoDB database, I'm using MongoDB Atlas. And I have this database called blog with a collection called posts, which at present time only has three different posts. Next, let's navigate to our blog route and see what we get there. So I'm just going to navigate to blog and we are going to get the message saying, welcome to the blog, but we don't have our content loaded. And the reason for that is because we haven't implemented it. So let me close down the terminal a little bit. Let's open up this blog here. And let's take a look at what our blog expects. So we are expecting a series of posts that we're just going to map over and we're going to display the post title, content and the list of tags for that particular post. And at the moment, we are going to be getting posts from a prop. But since we don't have any at the moment, since we haven't added any of that functionality, I'm just setting posts to an empty array so that Next.js doesn't complain. So let's go ahead and implement the get static props Next.js method, which is going to allow us to do static site generation. To do that, I will navigate to the bottom of this file. And here, what we're going to do is implement our get static props method. And the way that this is going to work is we are going to export an async function called get static props. And in here, we'll pass in the context. So this is going to be the get static props method, which is going to add static site generation to our Next.js blog page. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to make a call to our MongoDB database hosted on MongoDB Atlas and get a list of our posts from the blog collection. So the first thing we'll need to do is get an instance of our database. So we'll say const database and we're going to get this by connecting to our database. So connect to database. And this connect to database helper method comes from our MongoDB utility package called connect to database. So we'll have to import it. Let's go all the way up here. Oh, it looks like it automatically imported for me. Excellent. So we have our connection to our database. The next thing we're going to do is make a find call to our database and get a list of those posts. So we're going to say const posts equals await because this is going to return a promise database.collection posts find and in the find we're just going to return everything so we don't have to pass anything into the first argument and then we're going to get our data and we'll transform it to an array. From here we are going to return our props so we'll say return 
props and our props are gonna be those posts. And the final thing I wanna do here is only return a subset of my data from that post collection. So this second argument here uh, allows me to pass an options object. And in here, I'm gonna say projection and then pass in another object underscore ID zero. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to return all of the fields from my post collection, except the underscore ID field, which is an object, um, which is a, a type of object ID. And the reason I'm doing this is within the get static props method, when we serialize this JSON data, it is expecting only plain JavaScript objects. And since object ID is a more complex type, it's gonna complain. So rather than write a bunch of code to fix that, we're just not even gonna worry about the underscore ID. So now let me go up here and let's get rid of this empty array here. And let's go into our application and see if everything worked correctly. So I'll navigate back into my blog, refresh the page here. And now we can see the welcome to the blog page has three different blog posts. So we have the title, the content of the blog post, and then the tags that we assigned to the blog post. Now, if we were to go into MongoDB Atlas and make any changes, let's say this first blog post, we just add a two to it. When we refresh our page, we are gonna see the change reflected. And the reason for this is because in development mode, the get static props method is gonna run every single time. And while that is very helpful in development mode, in production, when we actually build and serve our application, we might get a totally different result. So let me create a new bash utility here and let's build our application and start it in production mode. So I'm gonna run npm run build to build my uh, Next.js application. And once that is done, you clear the console here, I will run npm run start. And what this is gonna do is it's going to serve the application from a build state, what your users would see in production. And it's gonna serve this on localhost 8080. So let me copy this URL. Let's go back into our Chrome window, navigate to localhost 8080. I'm gonna see Welcome to the blog, and we're gonna see Next.js 10 big features revealed too. But if we go into our MongoDB Atlas backend and we fix this title, you know, revert it back to what it originally was. So we'll remove that, hit update. Now if we go back into our application, refresh the page, we are still seeing Next.js 10 big features revealed and then two after it. If we go back into our development version, refresh the page, the two is gone because in our backend, that doesn't exist anymore. But on our front end, this is now a static page. And we see that no matter what we do, we could change any content here. So if we add another tag, for example, let's say test, another test, and go back into our application that is being served in production mode, none of those changes are being replicated and we're not seeing any of those changes. But in our production application, every time we refresh, we see the new content. So essentially what we have right now is a statically generated blog page. Let's fix that by adding incremental static regeneration to that blog page. And adding this feature is easier than you might think in Next.js. So to fix this, we'll go into our Visual Studio Code editor and in this return here, after props, we are gonna pass a second property called revalidate, and we're gonna set it to one. And I forgot a comma here. So, so far, so good. So by simply adding this revalidate property and setting an integer to it, we are adding incremental static regeneration to, the, to our page. And what this revalidate one means is it's going to refetch the data at most every one second. And if it can't get the latest data, it's gonna serve the old version. But if it does build that latest version, then it's gonna serve uh, the new one. So no matter how many requests you get to this specific blog page, the content that is served is going to be uh, pre-generated. But every one second, we can make one call to our database and get the latest version. 
So to see how this works, having this revalidate set to one in our uh, development version, you know, isn't gonna make a big difference because we are running this get static props method every single time. But when we run it in production mode, we are gonna see the changes. So let me stop the production version, clear and let me rebuild. So we'll run npm run build to build a version of our Next.js app with this revalidate property set to one. So let's do that. And then we are going to serve it again. So I'll run npm run start and it should serve on localhost 8080. So now if we go into it, go into our localhost 8080 and let's navigate back to the blog. Now we'll see the latest version of our content from the MongoDB database. So we have these two new tags, test and another test. Now remember, these pages are being served statically. But if we were to go into our MongoDB Atlas database and make a change, this specific page is going to be regenerated with the new content. So let's go ahead and do that and see what happens. So I'm gonna go into my Atlas cluster here and let's change some information around. So we'll say, we'll add a two there again and let's remove these tags and just go back to the original set. So now if we go back into our application, refresh, since we did it quickly, we don't see any of the changes, but if we refresh again, now we are seeing Next.js 10 big features revealed two, and then the two tags that I removed are, at least the, the text for them that, that I removed is um, replicated. And again, if we go into our MongoDB Atlas cluster, and this time let me actually remove those so that they don't exist. And I'll add some more content here just, just to make sure that we are seeing the changes. So we'll hit update. If I refresh very quickly, I don't see the changes immediately reflected. And that's because I still have the old version in cache. But when I refresh again, now I'm seeing that hello that I added to the content, as well as the two additional tags removed. And then this title is still the same. So I hope that this simple demo gives you an idea of the power of incremental static regeneration. It ensures that your pages always load super fast to the user while allowing you to make changes on the back end and see those changes reflected without having to rebuild your application. This is a very powerful feature and as of Next.js version 9.5, it is generally available, stable, and works really, really well. That about sums it up for this video. I hope I did a good job explaining what incremental static generation is and its benefits. I hope you enjoyed the demo, but if you have any questions, any comments, please leave them in the section below and I will see you next time.